Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Mike Vapes and Hell Vape. It's the Rebirth RTA. And we're going to try and determine what is the best set of coils that we can put into this tank so we can maximize flavor production. We can prevent reducing the airflow, which happens if you take big fat coils and lay them right up against the airflow um, ports that are on this thing. And I just want to make sure that we can get the best flavor out of this tank because it's been out there for a long time. A lot of people have gotten, and I've noticed that there are some people that complain that there's not enough airflow in this tank. It's stymied or it's stifled. I've also noticed some people say this tank has no flavor. Well, this tank has the capacity to make a lot of flavor, but you gotta have the right set of coils and you gotta set it up properly. This isn't a tank for beginners. Unless you're a beginner that likes to tinker and fiddle around with stuff and try and do the best you can. So that's where we're at today. We're going to take a look at all the different coil, coil choices that you have available to you and which one is going to be the best. This is the one that I built and this is built using Geek Vape, Fuse Clapton Wire. And the problem with this wire is it is really, really stiff and it's got a lot of mass. So three wraps, three full wraps is the best that I was able to achieve using this particular wire. But even with just three wraps, it's got a really slow ramp up time and it doesn't have the capacity to produce the great flavor I know this tank is capable of doing. So we, we are going to change that today. We're gonna to throw a different set of coils in it because I've thrown regular canthal wire made my own spaced coil and threw them in there. And they worked okay. The problem was you don't have enough surface area on there to produce good quality vapor. So what I did was I took these coils. These are Coil Master fused Clapton with a twist. 28 gauge times two, 32 wrap on it, three millimeter. And that's what I put into my tank. Good. That's running a little low right now. Let's turn it back up to where I had it. There we go. Now that's the flavor I remember. 75 watts is what I'm pushing on those coils right now. Nice, flavorful vape. I would say that this vape is probably an 8 out of 10. Maybe even an 8.2 out of 10. But the, the airflow on this is a little restricted. A little more than what was in the tank before I even dropped any coils into it. So we're going to take a look at throwing a different set of coils into this tank and try to maximize this tank's potential. So let's pop the old ones out, which were really fun to try and get to fit the deck that's on this tank. When I pull them out, you'll see what I mean. You see the bends I had to put into that thing to get it to fit right? Yeah, those were okay. But what I'm going to put in there right now is a set of flat Clapton wires, 0 0.3 millimeters by 0 0.8 millimeters, wrapped in 32 gauge Canthal A1. And when these come in the package, they come set up like every other standard coil out there, just like this. You see how it is wrapped and then it comes 
in one side and out the other. Well, to prep this tank, what we need to do is we need to bend the wires so that it looks like this. Because when we do that, you're going to allow yourself to be able to take both wires like this and drop them into the coiling tool that they provide and cut them to the right length. That's going to make your life so much simpler. So I'm going to trim these leads. And you could literally trim both of them at the same time, but I don't like to put any more strain on the wire snips than what I need to, because I like keeping them nice and sharp. Because some of these fat wires, it's a real strain to try and get everything in there. But you can see both wires lay up against each other really nice when you pre-bend them like that. A little bit of extra effort makes dropping these coils into the tank so much easier. And with them being flat, the grub screws provided should be able to easily grab onto them. But it is still a tank that requires a little precision okay so bear with me while I get both of these to sit in there properly and even though the, the leads are pre-bent this is still a little bit of a challenge to get those flat spots right next to each other. So when we tighten this down, we catch both of the leads at the same time. Okay. Just put a little tension on it. And now, as you can see, that grub screw is literally clamping on both wires at the same time. Make it nice and tight. And unfortunately this tank does have the one downfall of having flathead screwdrivers. Makes it easy to find a screwdriver to fit or a tool that you can use to clamp them down. However, when you tight and put big fat screws in there, big fat coils in there, it does make it a little more challenging. So now let's take this and bend this down towards the deck. And you want to make sure it's not smashed all the way down to the deck. But you do need to pull them down just a hair. Okay. Try and get both of them about the same. See, that one is too low. That will reduce the airflow. You can take your coiling tool and just slide it underneath there. And that's three millimeters off the off of the actual deck where the airflow comes out. Just like that, it is done. So we're gonna grab a little cotton, wick this bad boy up, and give her a try. I like the one we already got. Mm. Good flavor. The people that are complaining about not having good flavor out of this tank either didn't wick it properly or have coils that are just too much for what this tank can hold. And I know for a fact because I have been using two bottles of juice and finish them off trying to perfect the flavor 
and airflow capabilities of this tank. Throw our trash out. Now, the shoelace cotton that I used for this one are a little bit loose in here, but that's a good thing because you don't want this so tightly packed with cotton that it reduces the potential flow of juice into there. Give this thing a little bit of a rake because the juice wells in here are exactly the same size as the three millimeter coils allow you to flow through them. So you don't want to rake out a lot of cotton. However, you do not want a flat spot where cotton is matted down on the end of this. And you'll know when you go to wick this, like this one here, I can already feel by running my tweezers through that this one is matted down and is the, the strands are not parallel to each other. I know some people are anal about, you know, getting in wick and raking it from underneath. Sometimes you need to, sometimes you don't. And those tweezers are just not pointy enough to get in. So use a different set of tweezers if you can't get it to rake out properly. You should be able to feel how that cotton applies resistance to your tweezers as you're raking them. Now I know that looks like, oh man, you pull out a lot of cotton in there. But if that cotton is just a little clump inside these strands, it's not going to contribute to your wicking capability. Now, we got these big floof balls. We'll clean them up. And you'll see that what's left is going to wick beautifully. Because all of those cotton strands are parallel to each other. And it will provide enough capillary action. Oh, look at that. We still have a flat spot in this one, despite all my efforts. Just take the pointy end of your scissors and get rid of it. Because you don't want this to be choked off. All right. Run your tweezers through to separate one side from the other. And you can put some juice on this to help you wick it. But if this cotton is properly cut and raked, you'll see that those strands just fall down into the hole and they stop just short of coming down into there. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And as you push this down into there, that deck will catch the cotton strands. And as it starts to get too choked up and too filled up, it's not gonna to wanna to fall down in. So just pull up a little bit and then watch it fall down in, just like this, okay? And there's still plenty of movement in this. It is not jammed tight in there. You can literally see your tweezers easily slide alongside that cotton. One other property of cotton you'll come to find out is that it does expand when it gets wet. So now this one's too long, so we need to trim this just a hair. And we don't need to trim it a whole lot. The old adage of measure twice, cut once is wrong. You need to measure twice and only cut it one time. So here we go, split both sides. Drop this in here. Gingerly push from the side and it falls into play. Do the same thing on this end. And you're gonna have days where this is gonna go great and you're gonna have days when you just struggle to try and get this to fall into place. And if you need to drop a little bit of your e-liquid onto your cotton to help you do that, then do it. 
Sometimes, especially come winter time here, the static electricity gets so bad that this cotton is just going to be a big floof ball. So if you see your wife complaining about her hair always wanting to fly away, you might need to um, take that little bit of information and apply it towards your wicking. There you go. All wicked up. We'll put a couple drops of juice on the top of this. And there you go. And I know you're saying, but dude, you didn't dry burn them. You didn't bed them in. Well, I didn't want to bed these ones in. These coils, I ran them through my ultrasonic cleaner. And right now, they ohm out at 0.24. So I need a mod to throw this on. Well, I guess the Aspire Odin needs to get put on the shelf for a while. Quite honestly, my smock mag it served me well. And in 95 puffs, I'll have achieved a total of 70,000 puffs on this device. I think I got my money's worth out of it. I think it's time for it to uh, retire to the shelf. And if I really miss it a whole lot, I'll just break open my spare. I ordered a blue one. Finally showed up. And the glass on this one, despite it having cracks all through it, the touchscreen still works. It's great. All right, let's pop this on here. And as you can see, there's some cotton right here on the threads. Right there. We wanna make sure there isn't any cotton on the outside of these threads. Because when we twist this and thread this, you will literally dislodge your cotton. Take the time, be careful, and this will slide on there and not trap any of your threads. There we go. So after this review, unfortunately, the Mag P3 is getting shelved. It served me quite well. I truly enjoyed it. I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. That was a present my wife gave me last year. And it's definitely had a nice long run and provided great service to me. Oh, by the way, when you open these packages up because they've been sitting on a shelf for a long time, these O-rings are gonna be really dry and really stiff. If you have a hard time getting your top fill cap off, just take a drop of your favorite liquid, put it onto the O-ring and lube it up a little bit. And then it's going to be buttery smooth when you go to use it. So, there we have it. There we have it. New coil, yes. Oming out at 0.17. Pretty nice. I should probably let that soak up for a minute. So how about I jump and show you a couple of the other builds that I did in this deck. And um, then I'll, I'll be right back. Here we go.
We interrupt this program to bring you a special message. What this deck really needs is a nice set of coils. What I got here is Clapton Parallel. Yeah, pull that out of the ready box. So, ohms out of 0 0.012. Mm hmm. I'm going to be trying this one against the one he's doing now. Back to your regular scheduled program. What the old self doesn't know is that the new self is trying just plain Ganthal wire. We'll see how it goes. So here's a little preview. I did try it with the round wire. And as you can see right there, it works pretty good. But realistically, it just doesn't have enough surface area to create the vapor that we need. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna try the rest of these coils right there. I'm gonna try the rest of these coils and see how they go. Because I want you guys to be able to have the best vape experience when you go to first try out your tank. This tank doesn't come with a set of coils. So we gotta figure out what's gonna be the best one in it to produce the best flavor and the best vapor at the right temperature. While we try to maximize battery usage. So back to your regular schedule program. What do you think? I think that's going to be really nice. Hey, don't listen to that guy. These coils here, these coils, look, see the coils? They have too much mass. Yeah, the, the system works, the, the coils work, they're great. The ramp up time is way too slow on them because there's too much mass to that coil. So you gotta crank the wattage up till it's unbelievably hot after the first drag. Or you need to switch coils. So this is what we're gonna use right there. Use Clapton's. 28 gauge, 32, can't throw away one. Let's ohm out at 0.45. Well, we're putting dual coils in, so we're going to actually uh, ohm them out at like 0 0.22, 0 0.23. However, let me flip the thing overhead. Take a look at this right here. See this coil? Look how flimsy it is. I know flimsy is usually a bad thing, but in this case, that's a good thing. Look at this coil. That's stiff. That's stiffer than most heavy duty paper clips, okay? Has too much mass to be used in a dual coil setup like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these coils here, we're gonna do the same twist that we were doing on the other coil, twist it back like that, and then put a little bend in it, and look how easy that was to do, okay? And you could literally make the final tune adjustments to them, and this coil is gonna be so much better than the original one that we were building. So, we got both of those coils in here. They both are bent the exact same way. You see that? They all come off of one side. We're gonna slap this thing in here, just like this. And we're gonna grab our snips. Gonna snip them flush. Even snipping them 
is so much easier than it was trying to snip that Clapton wire, a fused Clapton wire. I didn't realize that is actually a double wire that is Clapton. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let you see what's going on here. Open that up to prep it. We're gonna open this side up to prep it. And watch this. We're gonna take both coils back to back, drop it down on the one side, and drop it down on the other side. And look at that. Not too shabby. All right. Let's tighten this thing down. Yeah. Not too bad. How's that? What do you think? Pretty good? Yeah. All right. Cool. Just like that, falls right into place. Piece of cake. Same thing over here, move this in, and then we'll just use the edge to make sure they're all parallel as they fall into this. And if you can see, it's not even touching the deck over here. Okay. Lots of room in there. You know, if there was a little bit of matted cotton in there, it would probably still work okay. That's it. Time for us. It gingerly. Get this on there. Grab our juice. And fill this tank up. There we go. Yep. I think I've done it. Listen, I wanted something that was gonna be as good as my current all day vape. And right now, it's the Aspire Odin 0.2 ohm coil running on a Smock Mag P3. I needed something to upgrade this to, something to replace this. Cause I know that these coils are gonna run out eventually. Just a slight bit of restriction on the airflow when I breathe in. Beautiful flavor. Nice clouds. Yeah. And guess what? I think I found it. I found it right here. Thanks, Mike Vapes. This is my all day device. got a new one as you can tell there she is now I've got this at 55 watts just like that one was 
It's a 0 0.17, so I think I need to crank this up just a hair more. Sixty-five watts, point one seven ohms. Yep, it's a flat Clapton wire. And let me show you how you go and bend it, because I realized I didn't do that last time. Take it, just like we were doing before. Bend it so that you achieve forty-five ninety degrees. Once you got a 90 degree bend in there, take your non wiring pliers, grab the end of it like this, and put a bend in it. What you need to do is to get your wires to be the one side of your coil. Once your coil is offset like this and you do this with two of them, it's a piece of cake to drop it into this tank. Yep. Yeah. These are twisted Claptons in the black tank. When I got those coils in here, I knew that I was close, but it wasn't quite what I needed. I knew I could do just a little bit better. Yep. The airflow on that with the twisted Claptons is slightly more reduced than the flat ones. You put the flat Claptons in here, it's a nice skinny wire, doesn't have a lot of mass, and you're going to get the flavor potential out of this tank. There's a three millimeter wrap on those flat Claptons and there's three millimeters between those coils and where the airflow hits them. Wow. That one is better than the Hellvape Destiny that I did a review on the other day. And that one has a bunch of turbulence on the airflow because those coils pop and crackle like crazy. These coils don't pop or crackle. They just produce a ton of vapor. And they're perfect. Yeah, I found my new all day vape. Thanks, Mike Vapes. You made an awesome tank. The Rebirth RTA, go pick one up today. Yeah, they're on clearance in a lot of different places. And it's definitely worth the 20 bucks or $22 you're going to pay for it. You never know. Might become your new all day vape. Wow. Well, that wraps it up for me today. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers by Christmas. So if you uh, found any value in this, I'd appreciate you if you smash the subscribe button. Also, I've got other videos that I've made. If you uh, found interest in this, maybe you'll like some of them too. Give it a try. And I just got done updating my website because uh, I put the thing up back in November and never got around to doing much with it. So check it out. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you have a great day.